Hi. After um, looking at some of the quizzes, I thought probably it's best I remind some of you how to use some maple commands again. And I, I think the geometric distribution maybe isn't clear. So I thought I'd start off by doing um, two videos. Most I did notice when people turn in their tests, um, and I yeah, I'm still grading, but uh, a lot of people said, you know, when I asked for suggestions that they'd like to see more sample problems being done. So uh, I thought I would try it this way, and then um, at least you get to see them in maple and constructing the random variable and so we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there and hopefully that these will help and you know just let me know if when you need more examples or or whatever if you want a video on anything it's it's easy for me to make one um i thought i would go backwards because i did find that some people on the in class part of the test missed the binomial i had a at least one or two binomials on there and um i think maybe how to build a random variable still isn't clear again so in five, section 5.1, this was the first random variable, was a binomial. And you do something so many times, and then you um, count how many times are successful. So here's a problem. Um, a hat contains 12 tickets, and uh, 7 are blue, and 5 are white. So maybe I'll write this down here um, just to remember. Uh, 7 blue and 5 white. Okay. Uh, three tickets are going to be drawn at random, one after the other, after a ticket is drawn is placed back into the hat. So actually what I'm doing is I'm drawing a ticket, recording it, putting it back in, and then I'm back to 12 tickets again. So we call the sampling uh, with replacement. I'm going to let, so again I'm going to draw uh, three tickets. So actually that is what n is three, that's my sample size. And a success is the number of blue tickets. So, I mean, you can label X whatever you want to be, but in this case, I'm letting X be the number of blue tickets. Um, and so then my probability of success um, for a binomial, I need a number of trials, which is N. Probability of success is, in this case, number of blue tickets. Probability of getting a blue ticket is 7 out of 12. Okay, so now um, determine the probability that two blue and one white is drawn. So what I was encouraging you to do, especially for the next homework set, is to write down your probability mass function. This one's a mass function for the binomial. So um, the choose command in maple I write as binomial. So I want to do binomial um, 3 choose x times uh, 7 twelfths is the probability of success times uh, 5 twelfths is the probability of not a success which in this case is getting a, a white ticket so that is 3 minus x. Um, so I think if you can build the mass function then it's just a matter of summing over the mass function or substituting it into the mass function. Um, this is defined for x's from 0 uh, 1, 2, and 3. Um, there could be 0 blue tickets, 1, 2, or 3. So there's my um, probability mass function. I should have, well, let's see if it'll convert. I think it'll convert nicely just into maple now. Right, so let's call this P of X. Yay, that looks pretty nice. And a lot of times once I type it in, I just sum it over its support to make sure that it sums to 1. It does. Um, the question was, what's the probability of 2 blue and 1 white? So what's the probability of x is equal to 2? So um, actually, probably the easiest way is just sum p, sum p of x from x equal to 2. That's the probability x is 2, that uh, exactly 2 blues. Um, another nice command I like is sequence. You can see uh, each probability value. So that's a probability x is equal to uh, x is equal to zero. X is equal to one, two, and three. It sums to one. Everything's good. Um, let me enter a few more things. Uh, why we're here? Why not find expected value? That's sum of uh, p of x times x, and x goes from zero to three. 7 fourths. How many do you expect to be blue? 
that should be three times um, the probability of blue, which is seven fourths. So we could do anything now with this. So I guess the key to me is once you type in this probability mass function, you could get any value you want, and I think that's a nice way to start. Um, I put another binomial in here. Uh, the probability that a grader will make a mistake grading your paper is uh, 10%. It's just a multiple choice. Uh, there's 10 questions, and questions are independent. What's the probability of at least one error, at most four errors? So um, when a problem is graded, either it's graded correctly or not, so it's a binomial, and there's 10 problems. So let's just write it in here, p of x. I'm just going to make a new p of x. p of x is binomial. Um, there's 10 questions, and I want to know how many ways to choose x that are graded. Um, with an error. So actually that's going to sound weird to you, but probability of success in this case is going to be 10%. That's the probability of making an error. Uh, and the number of trials is 10 because there's 10 problems. So P of X um, times 0.1 raised to the X times 0.9 raised to the 10 minus X that's my mass function. I'm going to sum it over its support. Should be one. Uh, what did I want to find? At least one error. Um, here's the hard way. Not, not hard, but I mean you already have p of x in there. Um, probably just as nice as one minus the probability of um, no errors. Okay, either which way. Um, what's the probability at most four? Is that the question? What was the probability there at most four errors? So that's x equal zero errors, one error, two error, up to four errors. There we go. So very likely um, with a 10% chance, we only expect 10% of what 10 is one. So on average, I'd only expect one error. P of x times x, x equals 0 to 10, this has to be 1, right? So there's the expected value, which we could just, right? We could find the variance, we could find anything now. Okay, so that should, that should be a nice review of the binomial, a couple examples. How about I save this too and post it in Angel with the worksheet already done? Here's a Poisson. I didn't provide a lecture on this, and then I realized maybe, again, the this, this might help to do a few problems. Um, Poisson random variable. It's a number of things that occur in time and space. How many events occur? How many uh, scratches per car door? How many raisins per cake? How many? You're just counting like uh, how many things in the area of interest. So um, calls come in to, let's say, Rose Holman at a rate of 1.5 per minute. So that's actually what we call a lambda, 1.5 calls per minute, okay? Uh, assuming that the calls, usually you say it follows a Poisson distribution so people understand that it's coming in over, items coming in over a random, or space or time are randomly distributed. Determine the probability at least three calls are received in four minutes. So. I see from this that on a four minute time interval, I need a lambda that matches a four, four minute time interval. So now, um, if I let x equal number of calls per four minutes, then the corresponding lambda would be um, 1.5 per one. So shouldn't that be three, six? Six calls per four minutes. So that's going to be my lambda for my Poisson. And a Poisson is e to the negative lambda times lambda to the x divided by x factorial for x is from zero or zero to infinity. And that's a valid mass function, but uh, so let's just put it in here first negative 6 times 6 to the x divided by x factorial. Is he legal? Yes, he is. So 
thumbs to one. Come on, Mabel. Waiting, waiting. Uh, we could find the mean, right? P of X times X. How many calls do you expect in four minutes? I hope it's six. Um, what did we want to find now? Uh, determine the probability that at least three calls, at least three calls, so three or more, probably X greater than or equal to three. Um, so we, let's put a, just a comment in here. We are finding probability, probability X greater than or equal to three. Greater than or equal to three. So let's say sum the Poisson from three to infinity. And uh, I forgot this would give us a nice expression since we're summing with these E. So about 93.8, okay. One more Poisson. Uh, number of earthquakes of destructive magnitude, Poisson distribution, one such earthquake per year. Okay, so that's the lambda if we wanted to know how many per year, but we want to know the probability mass function for the number of earthquakes in a six month period. So let, uh, let x equal number of earthquakes quakes in six month period. Then lambda is equal to, let's see, there's one expected per year, so there's a half. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's an average per six months. Okay. So let's write our P of X is Poisson okay sum it always goes from 0 to infinity because there could be none one two three we expect a half okay um, what was the question what's the probability so probably there will be at least one between January and June. Okay, so what's the probability? There's at least one in a six-month time period. So P of X, X equals one, at least one. Okay, should have remembered. Yeah. Or you could have said again, one minus a probability um, that there's none in a six-month period. Well, same tale. Okay, so I hope that um, helps, and I'll go ahead and save this, watch me do it, file, save it, and then put it in Maple, I mean in Angel also. And uh, I'll make another one right now on, help me, help me think, I'm going to do one on a uh, geometric, hypergeometric negative binomial.